Hey yogis, I'm Nicole. Welcome to My Yoga Time. Today's yoga class was specifically requested for those with a misaligned pelvis or concerns with their SIJ or the sacroiliac joint. So if you're really flexible or if you're hypermobile, then you're more susceptible to misalignment. Sometimes um, the beginner yogis who have got a lot of tension in their body uh, are less susceptible to injury because of that tension. It tends to protect them, which is why it's really important that throughout your practice that you try to engage your muscles around your joints to ensure that you've got correct alignment. At no point do we want to hang out and overstretch in any pose, the only time that you would be completely soft and passive is if it's a yin practice and it's not weight bearing. If it's weight bearing, there needs to be some sort of engagement around your joints. So for this class, and I wouldn't really call it a class because it's just only a couple of exercises that I'm gonna share with you. And these can complement whatever exercises your therapist gives you. So if you're misaligned through the pelvis, you've got pain through the lower back, the back of the hips, then do see your therapist, do go and see your physio, your chiro, whoever it is that you see. And then these exercises will certainly complement. So you will need a block. If you don't have a block, you can use a thick book as well. And also a chair or a couch, you can position yourself there. So we're gonna start with using the chair. I'll get you to come down onto your back and swing those legs up. So here we're just gonna practice some pelvic tilts. We're gonna tuck the tailbone under and then lift the tailbone up. So just rocking through the hips and pelvis. And certainly if you're misaligned or you've got something going on there, you'll feel a little discomfort here. And this is only a subtle movement. It should certainly not be causing any pain, but if there is discomfort, it's just a sign that something's not quite aligned. And sometimes it's those really subtle moves that are the most effective. So you might choose to spend quite a bit of time here. Um, I'm only going to be here for a brief moment before we move to the next exercise. But how much time you spend doing this might vary each day depending on how you're feeling. So from here, let's move on. Take your feet to the seat of the chair. We're gonna create resistance between the legs and the hands. So you're gonna push your legs out and hold your hands just on the outer knees. So there's a bit of force here, a bit of resistance. Do keep breathing and keep the jaw relaxed. And let's release. So from here, we'll come down onto your back. Let's take a hold of the right leg, just gently drawing it in towards the chest. Feel free to move that leg side to side just for a brief moment. And then from here, I want you to push your leg into your hands and pull your hands into the leg so you're creating that resistance again. I'm trying to send the leg down. Keep the jaw relaxed. So we're gonna hold this again for about 10 seconds or so. And then soften, you can draw that leg in a little closer if you like. So we're gonna do three rounds. When you're ready, press again the leg into the hands, hands into the leg. And soften. And we'll do that one more time. And relax, well done, let's change sides now. So 
So just a couple of breaths here, staying relaxed, no effort, no resistance. When you're ready, press the shin into the hands. And relax. And once again, press. And relax. And last round. And relax, well done. You can let that let go. So using your block now or your book, we're gonna come up into a bridge pose. Place your prop in between your thighs. So for this pose, we wanna keep pressing the thighs in on the block. So you might like to take your palms up. Feet can press down, send them away from your hips and then lifting up. Keep the thighs squeezing in. Keep breathing. And we'll pick up those heels, lower down one vertebrae at a time. Removing your prop once you touch down, taking a hold of those knees. Arms are straight as you inhale, bend the elbows as you exhale. So let this be slow. When you're ready, we'll come to seated. So let's come to stand. So opposed to avoid, if your pelvis is misaligned, would be a warrior one. And also be very mindful of your triangle pose. So once you've been realigned, you can practice those poses, but you might even prefer to, instead of your standard warrior one, where the hips naturally twisted, pick up that back heel and make it a high lunge. For your triangle pose, you might choose to bring the feet a little closer together. And always in your triangle pose, when you're holding the pose, when you're transitioning in and out, press those feet away from one another as so you're trying to stretch the mat. And just let the hips rest where they want to. Don't focus on tucking the tailbone under or curling it up. Just let them rest where they need to be, sending those feet away so that you're creating that bunda, that lock through the hips and pelvis. So in a standing position now, feet hip width apart, maybe a little bit wider. And this is something that you can do anytime throughout the day, whether you're standing at the bench, chopping your veggies, brushing your teeth, whatever it may be. So slide the feet away from one another, keep abducting the legs and then return to those pelvic tilts. So just tucking the tailbone under and then lifting the tailbone up. Move slowly if you can. So I hope that you find these simple exercises as helpful as I do. Of course, go and see your therapist if you're experiencing any pain or discomfort. Avoid your typical yoga practice until that's addressed and implement these simple exercises as much as you can throughout the day. I welcome any requests for any other classes and I hope to see you on the mat again soon. Have a lovely day.